Hello everyone, welcome to the Barrel Vision Spotlight, a brand new series on the Barrel Vision YouTube channel conceived by me, Harry, aka uh, Baron Barrel in the streams and the one who the other guy calls Harry. Um, in this series you get to see my face and with a little bit of background music. I figured I'd um, implement some level of production value considering doing these videos you are just going to be looking at still image. Now yes that does apply to the podcast as well but we are considering face cam for that as well and of course you have two people talking in those um, and it's a podcast this isn't a podcast um, but it is an idea that I conceived on the podcast and as a offshoot series for the podcast where we would talk about very minute individual things um, down to the most specific things I jokingly posited but with meaning even though it was a joke well, it was, meant to, it was meant to be funny, but it wasn't a joke. Um, I posted a, a radiation status effect spotlight, which is a video that I will get to in this series, assuming that I continue it. Um, and of course, today's subject is engineer, which is a broad topic, but I will also be talking about every weapon um, individually, as well as his grenades and um, tools. So this is going to be actually a very generalised, quick just overview me putting in my two cents a few words about engineer and here's my main um, and essentially what this series is I just very quickly go over a aspect of the game um, usually individual items such as individual enemies or weapons or perks um, that's sort of the point of this and um, I would say you'll see as this video goes on um, but I'm not really sure how I'm going to format these um, I will probably make notes but I, I do have some notes here and the only notes I have are the engineer is mid-range and is a combat support hybrid. And um, I guess we'll start with the mid-range thing. Um, engineer is the character who I would consider, is the class that I would consider the mid-range class in Deep Rock Galactic. Um, Scout is um, long range, obviously, although his secondaries could be considered short to medium range. And then Gunner I would also consider more long range than anything else. Um, Driller is the short range one, he's the brawler. Um, engineer is the mid range one. The shotgun is very effective at mid range and short range. Um, the stubby is mostly effective at mid range. Um, smart rifle is also a mid range weapon. It has limited range, in fact. Unlike the Warthog, which doesn't have limited range despite being a shotgun, the Lock One does, the smart rifle does, um, although you can extend its range. And of course, um, his secondaries take on a similar role as mid-range weapons. The grenade launcher obviously has drop-off, which it, to me makes it mid-range. Um, the bridge cutter is short and mid-range, definitely. It implements short range because you can have it expand, you can have the beam open up as soon as you fire the bridge cutter, which makes it a very effective short-range weapon. And of course it has a, a lifetime, um, which means it can't really be used at long range at all. But the shard factor of a can is a very long-range weapon. It's effective at all ranges, probably least effective at close range because it doesn't really get you out of sticky close range situations. It's better at preventing those situations altogether. Um, which really is engineer's point. It, um, that's what I mean by combat support hybrid. Because he's not combat support, he doesn't just soften up enemies. Um, he doesn't weaken them like Scout does. He doesn't brawl them like Dreader does. He doesn't just kill them like Gunner does. Um, he stops situations from going bad. Um, unfortunately, this does mean that Engineer actually performs quite poorly in situations that are already very intense. Um, at least that's my experience with him. Now, I did say he's my main. Um, I don't like to brag, but I should explain that I have very thorough experience with Engineer. Um, I promoted him 23 times past... Um, not tw No, sorry. Not 23 times past Legendary 3. Just, he is Legendary 23. Um, so that's 20 times past Legendary 3. So I have a lot of experience of Engineer. He's my, by far my most used character, my most used class. I prefer to say class instead of character. Tyrus poisoned me by saying character instead of class. Um, they're classes, in my opinion. I mean, it's not really opinion. It's an opinion whether or not you would call them characters, but they are definitely classes. Um, and my experience with Engineer is that he prevents situations from going bad. He creates choke points creates areas that the bugs don't want to be in, he stops them from getting to you. Um, this comes from a combination of all of his equipment. Um, 
Now, Engineer isn't one for combos necessarily, but I believe he has the most synergy across all of his equipment. As in, all of his pieces of equipment must be used if you really get the most out of Engineer. Unlike someone like Driller, where there's potential, unless you're using the Wave Cooker, there's potential for you to forget about the secondary. And the satchel charge is often the neglectable as well, but Engineer's entire arsenal comes into play almost 100% of the time, and that's why I find it so exciting about him. Um, and this, obviously, we do have direct combos, like the shotgun with turret whip, and the stubby with its two turret-focused overclocks. And, of course, the shard diffractor has an upgrade that makes it do more damage against electrified targets, which pairs it with the stubby and the smart rifle, um, things like that. It's all over the place. Engineer isn't afraid of combos, but he's not about combos. He's just about using all the equipment at the same time, such as platforms with repellent additive alongside your sticky grenades. Um, I took a short break just now to think of some more things to say about Engineer. Um, he is, from what I've seen of, because on the subreddit there are often polls um, asking what the most played class is or who your main is. Engineer comes out on top most of the time it seems, not by a huge margin. Um, Engineer is usually a close second, is my observation. Um, but Engineer is the most popular class in the game, which I find kind of strange because I, despite so much experience with Engineer, I actually often end up having a hard time with him um, and over time his weapons have become worse to me which is very upsetting and this particularly applies to the grenade launcher which we will talk about um, in a future video um, but in general engineer um, I find him one of the most difficult to play or at least once I settle into it it's like um, it's like second it's like sixth sense I don't really have to think but when I haven't played Engineer in a while, it's like, oh, I have to almost slot back into this very particular playstyle. He has the most, to me, he has the most particular playstyle out of the four. Um, Scout, you could say this is an exception for Scout um, with the grappling hook. Um, and maybe even Driller, I think it's the case of Driller, but definitely not Gunner. Gunner is the most generic playstyle. Um, it's just point and shoot. Engineer can be that, but he can also be a lot, a lot more than that. Um, which is what I appreciate most about him. So let's quickly talk about the turrets because um, I have an interesting relationship with the turrets and the platform gun because when you take the basic language of video games and class-based shooters, the engineer is quite a common class. He's obviously in TF2, he's in plenty of other shooter, class-based shooters and what do you expect from an engineer? Um, turrets and possibly, possibly a shotgun. Um, but turrets is where it's at. Um, but what I really respect about what Ghost Ship Games is able to do with their engineer is that I feel that the engineer is just as much defined by the platform gun as he is by his engineers. As by his engineers? Sorry. I think that the engineer Deep Book Galactic is just as much defined by the platform gun as he is by his turrets, um, in that they are equally, they are of equal importance. And that is sort of what traversal tools are in Deep Book. They're one of its most unique components when it comes to class. Um, toolkits and um, the traversal tools are what sets Deepbrook apart I think when it comes to the classes um, an engineer is set apart from the rest by his traversal tool in that it is his one of his most important pieces of equipment um, although I might actually I would disagree with myself there what I actually mean is that his traversal tool and his support tool are of equal importance which is not the case for anyone else um, Gunner the zipline is much less important to his identity than the, sh the shield, and even then the shield isn't that important to his identity. Driller, obviously, the drills are essential to his identity, the satchels are neglectable. Um, Scout, I would say both are important to his identity, but the grappling hook is far more important to his role in DRG, and his identity in DRG specifically. Engineer is not the case. The platform gun and the turrets are of equal importance and of equal significance and are equally valuable to Engineer's identity and its role in combat and missions. Um, well, obviously, one is for missions, one is for combat, um, but that's not actually the case. The turrets are, of course, just for combat, but the platform gun can do both. I mean, it can't, you can't damage things with it, but it can help you get around, you parkour around, outmaneuver enemies, and repellent additive can be used to create choke points, which is something I very much enjoy doing. And I want to talk about that for a little bit. 
area denial is a big part of engineer. Um, it's actually the only reason the fat boy overclock is any good in my opinion, is the lingering fallout effect, the lingering radiation damage, because um, it creates choke points, essentially, considering how big it is. It's got a good chance of locking off entire areas um, and it will damage enemies in the areas. It actually comes with a small slowdown as well, which I don't think most people know about. Um, sip of tea. But engineering is really about controlling the flow of combat, having mastery of the flow of combat. But if you don't, if you fail to properly prepare, you are punished for it. Engineer doesn't excel when his equipment isn't in play. Um, the shot diffractor can't kill enemies particularly quickly just by shooting at the floor. The grenade launcher can, but you are at risk of hurting yourself. The breach cutter can, but it can't hurt enemies all around you, it can only go in one direction. Um, the shotgun can't do this. The stubby can slow down enemies around you, and the, the smart rifle has an overclock called explosive chemical rounds, which I think is probably one of the most, one of the best things the engineer has for keeping yourself safe. And I want to quickly talk about, and this is something I'm going to do for all of the class spotlights, um, is talk about perks that I think suit them best. Engineer, the two perks that I use all the time are forms and dash. Um, dash is for the reasons I just explained, that it doesn't excel in scenarios where he doesn't have control. Unlike Gunner, where Gunner can just take control at any moment. Um, I would say Driller is in a similar position, Scout can just get out of there. Engineer doesn't really have these options, unless you're using RJ250 compound on the PGL. Um, but even then it's not very good at removing the threat necessarily. So I consider Scout, not Scout, I consider Dash essential for Engineer because he's not that mobile and he gets stopped quite easily by enemies. When you have Dash you can sort of get around this, you can just dash away from the enemies if it's getting too much and turn around, you know, shoot a grenade launcher or start just lay into them with your other weapons or your grenades. Um, speaking of grenades, the lure can get enemies away from you, but I think its effect is hindered by its systems and it has a maximum number of enemies that it can attract. And I think the lure is a relatively weak grenade overall. Plasma is are obviously very powerful, but are the least skillful. Or the least, um, they require the least uh, prescriptive thought, the least strategy. Um, the rust strategy is there are strategies with the plasma bursters based on your momentum. How fast you are moving or how you're moving will dictate how the plasma burster moves. If you are, for, if you are, for example, moving backwards, the plasma burster will burst very slowly. The burst will be very close together, which is better for single target damage and for very um, clumped up use of enemies. But if you're moving very fast forward, the burst from the plasma burster will be very far apart, which has to hit potentially more enemies, which it's up to you but um, and then the proximity mines really to me are the essential engineer grenade um, they they play into prescriptive for pre-planned um, creating choke points and controlling the flow of combat before it even starts um, and like I said if you don't you are punished for this now I mentioned forms as the essential passive for engineer and this is because engineer does struggle against swarmers now Yes, the turrets are extremely effective against swarmers, but I would argue that none of his weapons really are. The shard defender is, but you may end up using more ammo than you'd like. Um, and same goes for the smart rifle. Engineer does have ways of killing swarmers, but not very easily, and also not when they're on him, very close to him. Uh, so forms I've just found to be very useful, especially because engineer can often become quite close range, and even though you should avoid close range encounters with engineer, Forms is still useful in those scenarios. And I would like to go back to range just quickly, because I called Engineer mid-range class, and I 100% believe that, because, like I said, his long-range options are very limited and sometimes non-existent. And his short-range options are still just as effective as they are at mid-range, but they won't keep you safe. Mid-range is where you want to be to make sure you are not only you're safe, but you are at maximum combat efficiency. Um, I know a lot of people also like Born Ready on Engineer. I do as well, especially when using the Bridge Cutter. It's wonderful. But I wouldn't consider it essential. I do consider Fawns and Dash to be the most essential on Engineer. Um, I'm not going to get into any more specifics because then it will bleed over into 
other videos, I was going to mention his unique armor rig upgrade, but I'm going to do a spotlight on the armor rigs. Not on each individual one. There's only one upgrade that sets them apart for each class. Um, so I'm going to do one spotlight video on all four armor rigs. Um, so that should be fun. I would also like to touch on Engineer's character um, and sort of his role, his identity in the community and how he's thought of, how he's perceived. Um, he's perceived kind of as a nerd. Some people actually call him female. Tyler, for one, believes or ascribes to the idea that Scout and Engineer are female dwarves. Um, I kind of like the idea of the opposite, frankly. But I believe that the dwarves are actually asexual. Will I ever do a spotlight on dwarven gender? No. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I mean, I shouldn't say I, I might. I might. I'm probably going to do one on Phase Unite. But, um... Or Bismore. That'd be interesting. But look at this track. Oh, yeah. Engineer's identity in the community. Um, yeah, kind of a, a nerd, but... I want to talk more about his history, the history of his identity in game. He used to be um, the king of dreadnoughts, of elimination missions. Um, all of this changed when the elimination overall happened in update 33, New Frontiers, which is when the new bio, which is when the Azure Wield and the Hollow Bow were added. They also overhauled elimination by adding two new dreadnoughts and overhauling the default dreadnought fight. It was really that part about the OG Dreadnought. He used to be much more, um, or well, much weaker. There were no invincibility frames when you were, when his shield comes back, which meant that you could spam proximity mines to deal a ridiculous amount of damage in a very short period of time and essentially make the normal Dreadnought a non-issue, which was a lot of fun. And sadly, that's no longer possible. Um, I think that just about brings us to a close. I was surprised that I was able to get this video over seven, over ten minutes, which is the ideal. I would like to do that, but these are definitely going to be the shortest videos on the channel still. And um, I might end up doing two of these a week because this will be out on Sunday. I might be doing these on Wednesday and Sunday. And um, for some reason, Tyler doesn't really want to do videos on Wednesday, um, which I respect because we don't really have enough videos to do. I, I do now with this series, um, but Sunday could be considered a rest day, and I I respect that. Um, although I'm not recording this on Sunday, it's just going to be released on Sunday. I'm recording this on Saturday, after we've recorded the Volume 1 soundtrack tier list, which I think was a really good video. Um, this is also the only... Well, this is the only solo video on the channel so far. Um, hopefully it's the first sighting of either one of us in person, um, in the flesh. Um, so I'd just like to say hello, this is me, I'm Harry, um, co-host of the Baron Vision YouTube channel and the Baron, Vi the Baron Vision, the Barrel Vision podcast. Um, I'm also known as Baron Barrel. Um, I should be opening up a Twitter soon for Baron Vision, so look forward to that. Um, and look forward to the next one of these, which um, I would like to take suggestions um, for what I would do next out of... The two, here are the things I'm going to do next. I'm either going to do another class next, as in just an overview of Gunner, or I'm going to go down the lane of just going hard on Engineer, doing everything to do with Engineer, which, apologies for the sound of paper, um, includes all of his equipment, individual videos on the walks, W Summer, Eiffel, Bridge Cutter, PGL, Shard Defractor, the Sentry Gun, the Platform Gun, the, the different grenades, um, even the clean, balanced, unstable overclocks all different videos for every weapon and the tier 5 upgrades so I'd like to know if you want to see um, overall class videos or if I should just focus on one class at a time but it will take a long time to get out of engineer so you let me know anyway I enjoyed doing this I just want to this is just a way for me to get my thoughts out on everything possible about the game in a very distilled and pure way in a non-conversational way which I'm not really used to but I haven't found it too difficult and I want to end this video before I get to 20 minutes, which is in 15 seconds. So, um, without wasting any more time, um, thank you very much for watching. Rock and Stone Miners, subscribe and like and click the notification bell. <laughs>